Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now it's been a while since we tried this, so today we're taking a modern look at gaming with just 4GB of RAM. What's more, a single stick of memory. I don't think you can actually buy 2GB modules of desktop DDR4, I certainly haven't seen any. So not only do we have a lesser amount than what almost everyone would recommend in 2023, but we are running in single channel mode. This basic stick of RAM is clocked at 2400MHz by default, but I was able to overclock it to 3000 MHz in the MSI BIOS. This might help out, but there's only so much we can do. You might think that it's only older AAA games that will start and play with just 4 gigs of RAM, like Assassin's Creed Origins here, which, while it achieves a decent average frame rate, suffers in terms of the percentile figures. Despite these numbers, it is playable to a degree, but it's hard to tell when frame dips and drops will occur, making things like combat and stealth a little bit inconsistent. As I said before though, as a slightly older title, surely this is the outlier, right? No newer games can run with such a meagre amount of memory. Well, you might find yourself quite surprised by the following results. Now, I expected terrible percentile figures throughout, that's a given, especially when running in single channel mode, but I wasn't expecting some of these games to actually be sort of, well, playable, despite their inconsistencies. The next game I tested was Cyberpunk 2077, and yeah, it will stutter like crazy in those busy, built-up downtown areas but these stutters aren't as constant as you would expect, and they happen even less when we're out of the car and walking about causing carnage on foot. What I'll say now applies for a lot of the other games too. While the percentile lows will look awful according to the figures, they are sometimes reflective of frame drops that happen once or twice every minute or so, and don't necessarily mean that games are constantly inconsistent. Of course I'm not suggesting for a minute that you buy 4 gigs of RAM, it's a terrible idea. My first, second, third, fourth and fifth attempt at Battlefield 2042 ended like this, and if I did get into the game then it would be a stuttery mess. However, after hiding away in the corner of a map for a couple of minutes and letting everything load in, my following gameplay attempts were rather successful. It was almost unbelievable actually. This is certainly a best case scenario example and it took a lot of attempts to get to this point, but look, Battlefield 2042 is at actually running quite smoothly here, and I really don't know how. This is 64 player Conquest 2, so there's a lot going on, but we are quite far away from the action. Still, this was certainly a shocking result. 4 gigs of RAM in Battlefield 2042. Who would have thought it could work? Following the success of Battlefield, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which achieved a very nice average frame rate but suffered from the same inconsistencies as the rest of the games. It was playable in a way, and I was even able to get a couple of kills, which is perhaps the most surprising part of this whole test. There weren't any specific points that saw the game stutter, it just happened at random, and it's not very helpful if and when you are going up against an enemy, but it's hardly unexpected. This is with the balanced preset and the high textures too, so no compromises have been made settings wise as that's usually how I'd play with the RTX 3050, another sort of playable result. GTA 5 is another older game so I didn't expect too much trouble, here we had the usual stutter in built up places and busier areas. I could have gone higher with the settings but I played a little bit safe here and I also turned on MSAA and set it to 4x. Everything looks nice graphically, and as expected there were a few dips and drops, usually when explosions occurred thanks to my heavy grenade usage. Driving at speed also incurred similar performance drops, but our overclocked single stick of DDR4 is really holding its own here. It's struggling, that's for sure, but it's giving it its all. Let's move on to the more troublesome titles. Forza Horizon 5 started and played for about 2 minutes at a time. I found it pretty funny when the low system memory warning came up on screen because it said we had 3.9 gigs of memory but the game wanted 9.9, something like that. If this warning comes up when we've got 8 gigs of RAM in the system, usually the game will carry on fine, albeit with a few dips here and there. The same can be said when we're testing a graphics card with a low amount of VRAM. In the case 
case of 4 gigs of system memory though, the game simply cannot push through the limitation and always ends up crashing to the desktop no matter the visual settings or resolution that we choose. A good effort nonetheless, I'm sure you'll agree. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered not only crashed to the desktop, but it crashed the whole of Steam, with the program closing entirely upon exit of the game. The same thing actually happened in Elden Ring, which happily got to the main menu and began the loading process, but after a couple of seconds it would freeze and crash, taking Steam with it. Using 4 gigs of RAM can cause a PC to exhibit some weird and unexpected behaviour. Red Dead Redemption 2 also loaded after a brief stint of telling me that I had no right to access the game through the Rockstar launcher. Another weird effect of 4 gigs, I guess. After loading into story mode, it was actually playable for about 10 seconds, but crashed every time out of the 10 attempts I had. I'd call that a thorough test and one that didn't end too well. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with its next gen patch didn't want to load at first, certainly not with DX12 mode enabled from the launcher. It did however launch with DX11 mode and didn't really stutter that much more than it usually does. Ok maybe a little bit more but it wasn't a complete mess even with high settings and making my way across the water through the busy city and out the other side didn't really give me too many problems. For sure the percentile figures would say otherwise but it wasn't a complete disaster and that's all we can ever hope for on this channel. I'm actually really pleased with this result to be honest but let's finalise with another online multiplayer game. Being the absolute pro I am at Fortnite, I wasn't going to let a few stutters get in my way. Just like The Witcher 3, this is a game that can exhibit stutter and poor frame times anyway, even with 16 gigs of RAM, so this didn't actually feel that terrible to play. We probably could have gone a bit higher with the settings, but I wasn't really sure what to expect and I didn't know how much I'd have to account for a poor frame rate and frame times. Turns out not that much, and with medium settings, 100% scaling and epic view distance, I was able to stay somewhat competitive. A truly mixed bag of results today. Overall, 4GB of RAM is a terrible idea, and although it does actually feel fine to use in a system for everyday tasks like browsing the web, watching HD content and scrolling through social media, playing games is going to be hit and miss, even if some titles will really surprise you. That's all for this video then, I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to test this yourselves, go ahead, you won't break anything, unless you try sticking DDR4 in a DDR3 motherboard. I certainly had fun with this test, and I hope you had fun watching it. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and you want to of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video, when I think we've got something pretty special or unusual arriving that I'm pretty excited to take a look at. Thank you and I'll see you all very, very soon.